Welcome back to the channel. So when you start on a new project like this, you should always try to get an assessment of the overall health of the engine before you get too far into it and spend a bunch of money. The first thing you can try is a cylinder balance test. You can do that before you even take possession of the car. It gives you a, a pretty good overview of whether the engine is working right or not, or whether you have one cylinder that's bad or a couple cylinders that are bad. That's a good test to perform. The next things you should probably be looking at are a compression test and a leak down test. For the compression test, we're gonna pull all the spark plugs out. We're gonna put a tester in each cylinder. We're gonna crank the engine over and we're gonna see how much pressure we get on each cylinder. A successful compression test has a result where no two cylinders are more than 10% difference in terms of the pressure that's registered. If you get an indication on a compression test that something may be wrong with a cylinder, the next thing to do is a leak down test. A leak down test can give you an idea of how much compression is leaking in that cylinder, and it can give you an idea of where it's leaking. Like for instance, do you have a leaky head gasket? Do you have a bent valve? Uh, do you have a damaged piston? And on top of these three things, another good test is a dyno test. So this car's already had two of these four things done. I did a cylinder balance test, that was all clean. I've loaded it up on the dyno, and after fixing a bunch of little things that needed to be fixed just to get the car basically running right, I've made a dyno test with a number which is a little on the low side, but it's, I think, well within the range that's expected for the car in this state. Looks pretty good. But to be sure, we're gonna go ahead and do a compression test today. It's also a good opportunity when you do the compression test to replace the spark plugs as part of an overall tune-up. So we're gonna do that. Then we're gonna get the car back on the dyno and we'll try a few adjustments and see how good we can get this car. It's easier to get the spark plugs out of a lot of these modified cars than it is out of a stalker like this. On this car, in order to get good access to this side, we're gonna pull this inlet tubing out along with the mass air meter and then we still have all this emissions thermactor tubing in the way which obstructs access to the plugs and wires so that's where we're going to get this out we got one less thing to worry about and we'll see how we do so now we got the plugs out we're going to go ahead and do a compression test on the car the key thing you're going to need is a compression tester so all this is is a tool that threads in to a spark plug hole has a gauge, has a release button, and then you install it in a spark plug hole, you crank the car over a few times, and then you can read on the gauge how much compression it makes in PSI. I think this might even have kilopascals, but I've never seen someone, <laughs> not in the US or Canada anyway, measure compression in kilopascals. But um, most of these will have a quick disconnect for the gauge. And that means all you got to worry about threading in is this hose with the, with the threaded end. And that makes life a lot easier when you go ahead to do it. Another thing you're going to want to have is something to write on to make note of your compression. So I always lay it out, cylinders one through eight, keep a pen handy, and then I'll note down what the compression is for each cylinder as I do it. And the final thing that makes life a little easier is our remote starter button. Now you don't have to have this. You can just crank the car, but what you're trying to do is crank the car over the same number of times each time, if that makes sense. So if you crank it five strokes on cylinder one, crank it five strokes on all the cylinders. Or if you crank four strokes on cylinder one, crank it four strokes on all the cylinders so that you get a comparable result because what the compression test is is a comparison the other thing that's helpful with a remote starter button is you can actually watch the gauge as you're doing the compression test and a sign of a good cylinder is that you get a significant jump up in compression on the first stroke so that's all good reason to have a remote starter setting up the remote starter button is no super genius thing all you're going to do is pull the S terminal off of your starter solenoid, or in this case, there's only one 
terminal that's hooked up and connect one side of the button to that, which has little alligator clips. And connect the other side to the battery side of the starter solenoid. And then when you press the button, you're gonna activate the solenoid and cause the starter current to jump through the solenoid. If you tie the left and right side together through the button, you're gonna put all the current through these little wires and they're not really made for that. So you should avoid that configuration wherever possible. I wanna start with number one here. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this. I disconnect the gauge, so I'm only dealing with the plug. I'm gonna stick that down in where that spark plug hole is and then try and turn that in. There's an O-ring on the end of this tester, so you'll feel it snug up. You don't have to go too crazy here. Usually you'll save yourself a little grief if you just go finger tight. Then, once you got it in, connect your tester, and then we'll go ahead and uh, try to crank the car. I've run my starter button over here. You can see my power light's active. I've got the battery hooked up now. Have all the tools and stuff out of the way. I wanna go ahead and just crank this car over about five times. And we're gonna watch this gauge as we do it. Now, make sure you keep your wires for your starter button the heck out of the way. Oh, and make sure you have the car in park. Let's just triple check that. There's five cranks. You saw it come up pretty strong on the first crank. And that looks like 125 or so. I'm gonna bleed that off and we'll recheck that. Once you're all rigged in here, it doesn't hurt anything to uh, run it a second time. So it came up close to 90 on the first hit. And I would have called that like 125. So then we'll go through and do the rest of them. I completed the compression test. Nothing looks particularly frightening about the compression test on the car. It's a little bit lighter on the driver's side than the passenger side. On each bank, they're within 10%. And they're almost within 10% bank to bank. But sometimes you'll find that one of these uh, one of these banks will have a little bit less compression over the whole bank than the other bank. So I don't think I'm too worried about it, uh, but I'm gonna show you how to do a leak down on here anyway. What you're gonna need for a leak down test is a leak down tester. That's a tool like this. And this, this is the part that's gonna thread into the spark plug hole in the cylinder head. And this part's gonna be hooked up to your air compressor in the shop. The way you do this is you plug your air compressor in and then you're gonna, you got a little regulator here. You're gonna adjust your regulator here so that your gauge is at zero or at the middle of the set range. Then you're gonna thread the plug adapter into the spark plug hole. Then you're gonna plug those two together and you can take a reading off of here to tell how much leak down you have. When you have a leak down tester on, you'll be able to hear air coming out places like the oil fill cap or the dipstick tube or the throttle body or the tailpipe or see bubbles in the uh, cooling system, like if you take the radiator cap off. And that's going to give you an idea, if there's a problem, where where that leak by is. So you got a better idea whether you got a blown head gasket or bad valves, or you've got leak past the rings. So let me go ahead and uh, thread this into number one. I wanna do number one because it's easy and because we're not all that worried about anything else. So you thread this in, it's just the same kind of a deal as the compression tester is. And then what you wanna do is get the car at top dead center on the compression stroke of number one. You'll notice that I have the distributor cap off. 
Let me just put it on the way it's going to go on, like that. And what you can see is the number one terminal is here, okay? So when we're on the compression stroke of cylinder number one, the rotor is going to be over here towards the number one terminal. And when I crank the car, you're going to be able to hear a little of air come out of here when we're actually on the compression stroke. That's the valves closed and the engine trying to compress that air. But because the plug's out, it's going to come out here. So let me crank this over and we'll see if you can see and hear that. Did you hear it? Maybe you saw it. As this crosses through here, you'll get a pshht of air out of there. Why does this matter? On number one, it doesn't, because you've got a balancer, which you can read. So you can read your top dead center number one on the balancer. But if you've got any other cylinders here that you need to have a look at, you're going to set it up, and this is how you're going to find top dead center for that cylinder on compression. Okay, well, that's actually about, I don't know, 16, 17 degrees before top dead center on the compression stroke. Something like that's going to be fine. So now we've got our tester set zeroed for the shop air. I've got about 110 PSI on the, on the shop air system right now. I'm going to connect these together. And you can hear, you can hear the air leaking off. You'll be able to see that leak down tester is showing in the low range. Okay, so the leak down tester shows in the low range. We already felt that this cylinder was fine based on the compression test, so we're not very worried about it. You always get a little bit of uh, leak by with this system, so looks. Uh, looks pretty good. Now, if you did have another cylinder that you thought was a problem, you would get to top dead center on compression on that cylinder, put the leak down tester on, and then if you get a high leak down, you can listen in the various places to try and determine what may be wrong with the engine, like a burned valve or a head gasket failure or worn rings or worn cylinder walls or um, <clears throat> that kind of a problem before you go ahead and take it all apart. Well, the engine seems pretty good. I didn't do a leak down on every cylinder because honestly, it looks like it's pretty good. And that's probably not a big surprise when it had a, a pretty okay getting started dyno test. So I'm gonna go ahead gap these new spark plugs at 45 not 55 like the ones that came out put them in put a new set of wires on and then we'll be ready to start doing some dyno work on the car